all, this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. And I was uh, giggling before starting on this comment from John. Dr. Bean, I was on vac vacation. <laughs> what are we voting on? You have my vote. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, last week, we discussed that how do we move forward as pandemic to the most extent is rolling down or winding up. Of course, if you look at the comments of that video, there are many cool beans who said pandemic is not over. There are some who said, yes, we can start talking about other, um, other topics. And then there were comments about you decide what you would like to talk about and we would love to chime in or hear. Then there are folks who had their own suggestions as well. I had uh, presented a, a form, Google form, to fill. So I want to share the results from that Google form with you. Plus, because you're here, I'm going to share a couple of bonus studies or news that I'm, I'm going to, one of them I'm going to discuss tomorrow in detail. But this will be a preview for you to see that today. Uh, with this, let's start. Hello, Margaret McInnes. Hello, Roller Girl, Dr. Iron Mom, Guy Telfer, and everyone, Jean. OK, so let's start. Let's see what I have for you. <laughs> so this is the data and the forms. Of course, it looks like an eye chart. So I'm going to show you the results now. But this is the data that you filled. So your decisions. What I was, uh, what I had asked in that uh, Google form questionnaires was number one: What would you like to discuss next? And of course, that was a limited set of choices that I had given. So if you were talking within the context and voting within the context of that, of course, then I had already limited the choices. So I'm not saying that that are the actual decision that came from the audience because it was off the list that I provided. Uh, we can continue to expand, and we will continue to um, discuss more topics. But here is where my head is at. As we age, one of the issues that occur with us is that our telomeres are shortened and our DNA repair becomes less um, possible or there is less repair, which then causes senescence or aging of the cells, which then causes all kinds of issues. The second thing is our inflammatory state of our body. When we were a baby versus now is very different. We are more inflamed because of our immune system's um, mal malfunctions, because of our cells being senescent, so many factors. So what I wanted to do is we went through COVID. Here we are, some of us completely intact. Some could not cross this time. Some eventually we are all so um, fatalistic thing to say, but eventually we are all going to go back. But during this time, and then some came out with the vaccine injury, some with the long COVID, some psychological issues, combination of all of them, financial issues, multiple kinds of scarring occurred for this whole generation. So the question is, how do we move forward? So number one, as I promised, I'll continue to work for long COVID vaccine injury patients and continue to find solutions for them. And number two, I wanted to make sure that out of these two big issues, um, DNA repair issues and the inflammatory state issue, I wanted to work on one of them. And so I chose that we should work on inflammatory states. 62% of Americans, 62% of Americans have diseases attributable to inflammatory state. Globally, about 50% of the population can have 
diseases attributable to chronic diseases or chronic inflammatory state, but we in the US have a higher number. So I think it is important to discuss how do we bring our inflammatory state back towards a baby's state that means less inflamed and that would actually give us healthier lives. So one, I was trying to ask, what should we discuss? Second, now you know my mission. And the second question was, what kind of medium? Should we make more cartoons? Should we make more illustrations? Should we make uh, written content, quizzes, long form videos, short form videos? And so I'm gonna share the answers to that as well. And the third thing was, how do we choose a topic? So do I come up with the topic? Do you want to come up with the topic on a weekly voting basis and so on? And somebody said something to me which was so um, profound. I did not know <laughs> John says more cartoons. Yes, we're going to make it medical cartoon site. Uh, I, it was so profound, I did not know this before. One aspect of this channel, good or bad, you like it, you don't like it, whatever it is, one aspect of this channel is my choice of topics. That means in the sea of topics, there are various presenters who are filling their buckets <laughs> with various topics and then presenting them to you. And that filling of their bucket with a set of topics is based on their own biases, their own inclinations, their own understanding of what needs to be brought to you, either because of caring for your health or because of click baiting you or earning money from ads or earning monies in form of donations, whatever it is, money or care or care plus money and so on. So my choice of topics is a style of mine, which is my bias that reflects to you. So somebody said that you choose your topics and we will like to hear them. So this was the basic set of um, questions. So let me give you the summary first. What should we do next? Mechanisms of supplements and herbs, 50%. And I'll show you the graphs in a second. What kind of format? long videos short, so long videos, 40.6%. And who selects the topic? Do you wanna vote on a topic set or do you want me to choose? And 72.6% said, you choose. This also puts the responsibility with me. <laughs> this allows you to procrastinate and say, you know what, let him do it. <laughs> so uh, let me show you the graphs. And uh, please don't mind this little compression thing. What had happened was, let me actually tell you the story. I got this little procedure today. Uh, what happened was that over these years, as I kept bending and kept drawing and drawing, um, I think I damaged some part of my wrist. Just like I had damaged previously my elbow and my, my fingers here, I damaged some part of the wrist and what that did was it created a small defect in my wrists, you know, covering, joint coverings. And that created a small, um, we call it a ganglion cyst. So it's a tiny little cyst that develops and it gets filled with synovial fluid or the joint fluid. So usually it is harmless. It is just an aesthetic thing that there is a bulge here and I didn't care much. However, now with further work, it had become big enough that it would push on my tendons. And when I would draw, I would feel a little tight and burning sensation over here. So then I went to plastic surgery today and they tapped, meaning they drew the fluids from it and they put a compression bandage on it. They asked me to keep it this way for a few days. Um, and they said, if it recurs, which it many times recurs, they said, if it recurs, then they can surgically fix it. And then I will be out of commission for using my hand for two, three weeks. So all good. I have no pain, nothing. They, I can move my hand as well. But they wanted a compression bandage here to kind of keep that little cyst um, 
you know, from recurring. Normally, it doesn't <laughs> work very well. I'm a doctor as well, but we'll do what they are asking for. So here, so back here. Uh, so Andy says, why not mix it up? And Andy, I think I would do that. Some long form, absolutely, I'll do that. I wanted to ge generally understand how the audience um, is looking to do. So I would uh, do that. <laughs> John says, I've had that happen to me. I usually smash it with a heavy book. Am I crazy? So no, don't. If it bursts, it becomes an emergency. And an emergency in this area uh, can cause a forced surgery, which if there is a problem with the surgery, that in, in turn can cause an issue. So don't <laughs> smash it with a heavy book. There are actually... I used to wear when I was drawing and my wrist was becoming bad and then there is a compression on it you can use that or you can get it tapped and then put a compression uh, for example in today's um, procedure what they did was they kind of hurt it they injured that little cyst multiple times and the thought with that injury is that it would cause the scarring to occur and it would cause that a little cyst to kind of close down or shrink in size and because scar is not very pliable it, it there's a hope that it would stop that way and the uh, person who was doing the procedure she said our surgeon actually prefers that there is a tiny bleed in it so that hematoma develops which then causes uh, scarring and shrinkage of the of the cyst but it's never advisable to kind of try to burst it because it can create an issue so please no more book smashing on it okay so back here kim says why are my comments getting striked hopefully not okay so let's look at the graphs so this is the first one uh what topics next so of course once again as i said before the topics were limited, how to control and reverse type 2 diabetes, then um, hypertension, uh, resume medical lectures, mechanisms of life lifestyle uh, choices for various hypertensive and other diseases, mechanism of drugs, which FLCCC is coming out with cancer and antidepressants and so on, and then uh, mechanisms for vitamins and supplements. And so you chose 50% of you chose uh, vitamins and supplements. And then the second one was resume medical lectures, 16.8% and then 12% and then lesser were the other topics. <laughs> Alexander says, do it yourself surgery live stream. No. <laughs> Did you see that uh, doctor who would do uh, facial facial surgeries, plastic surgeries, and then She'll put them on uh, TikTok and she just got her license taken away because she caused some damage. So no, <laughs> no live streaming. So this is one topic, supplements and herbs. Of course, for example, tomorrow I want to talk about a COVID study that came out, I think is very important for us all to know. I'm going to give you a, a foreshadowing today. So I would, of course, switch it up. But a primary direction given by you is this then preferred medium this was a surprise for me because i thought the majority and this is about 200 responses 198 responses so not a huge size of the sample uh, but still it was surprising for me because i thought majority would say short videos and look at this, long videos, 40%, short videos, 31.1%. Long videos and short videos, uh, you know, kind of combination, 14.7%. So that is very interesting, which translates to me is uh, do a lecture in depth for some mechanism that you're going to discuss. And I am going to do short videos anyways, because my marketing team is killing me to do some TikTok videos or some short form videos to engage those audience 
who have fully developed attention span of a goldfish or lesser, <laughs> especially our youngsters. So um, I think I will kind of mix them. But this is what you said in terms of what video. <laughs> John says, how long are the long videos? You know my long videos. I started with two hours of chit chats and one hour or more of mechanisms. And nowadays, you've seen that my videos are mostly 20, 30 minutes. Very rarely go an hour or more. So that is the long videos. Then there are smaller percentages that include short video, article, study summaries. I thought a lot of you will say, you know what, just create summaries for us. But that was not the primary interest, which tells me that our the thing that I used to be very proud of is that cool beans have an understanding of medicine, sometimes even more than the healthcare professionals. And because of that, we, the cool beans, can read studies and can listen to the doctors or presenters with much more understanding than many other audiences for other presenters. There are many presenters who do spoon feeding I found this, here is a message I'm giving to you. Please digest this, and it is the message. I have always done this uh, discussion of how do I present the mechanism so that you can connect the dots. And uh, so the <laughs> Denise says I miss in-depth. Jean says my vote for long in-depth videos. So that is the kind of message I'm getting here, that the audience type that has uh, uh, gathered around here is the one that liked the long videos. And this is uh, also an understanding for me. Uh, let me tell you something interesting. It may be useless, but it I think it is very interesting for me. Throughout my career, as I started from a software engineer, before that a doctor, and then I continued to um, get promoted as a director and VP and head of technology, etc., there used to always be this message that know your audience when you are going to speak with them. And I always used to struggle with the idea of knowing your audience. If I'm going to speak with you, how do I know you? I can't. And if I, I remember I used to do large um, presentations. In the software engineering side, my speciality in the US was retail systems. So sometimes there'll be large settings in which they will want me to present how the payment system works or how discounting system works or how item rebate applications work and so on. And so I would always, before doing the presentations, I would always think, how do I know my audience? They're all here from various walks of life. And I found out after doing these COVID videos that knowing your audience actually means gathering your audience. You present a specific set of topics, and those who like those, the, the topic, the style in which you present, the, the way you, the accent, those who like that will gather around you. Those who do not will go away. And that is how you know your audience, because you actually cultivate your audience. That was a huge epiphany for me. Again, you can say, hey, 55 years, 54 years, and this is what you found out now. Sure, I may be simplistic, but still, it was a very interesting thing for me. So that means if you are going to gather your audience around you, then you do what you do best. And those who like that will come and gather around you. And now you know your audience. So uh, my audience liked long videos because that is what I have been doing for three years. And so those who like the long videos, they have gathered around. And that is the majority. So then the third one, how to select a topic. And there were two choices here that we do a weekly voting system versus I choose. 
And it is interesting that 72.6%, the statistically significant number, <laughs> wanted me to choose the topics versus uh, them, the audience. And I was, when I was looking at these results, I was kind of surprised until I read this comment. And I'm paraphrasing that comment is still under this last video that you decide what topic you want to do and we would love to hear it. There were some who actually said, we don't care for what topic, we just want to listen to you. <laughs> so uh, that was where it then dawned on me that the whole presentation from this channel has a particular flavor that you like. And one part of that flavor is the choice of topics that I make. That part, for some, they like it. For some, they don't like it. And so those who don't like it, they maybe try to work with me for some time and then they become frustrated and they yell at me and curse at me and then they leave. And those who love it, they stick around. So that <laughs> tech answer says P equals zero, 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 something, correct? Correct. So Gene says, follow your passion and your tribe will gather, correct. So this is, um, this COVID time has been very instructive, scary time, instructive time, and very, a time with an opportunity to serve. And in this, I have to uh, say that there have been so many cool beans like Margaret McInnes and others who have asked me not to name them who have supported and helped produce these lectures. And so it's not Mubin's work. It's we all came together and we said, let's do it. Some, some folks were offering some ideas for topics. Some were sending me links. Some were sending me funds to, to support some work. Even recently I got a, a donation to take the videos on YouTube, bring them to another server then do the transcripts and then searchability and AI. And so there is a completely different um, idea of how to present these so these can be more searchable. So if you said, did Dr. Mubin talk about berberine and where, then you can more easily search for them. So everyone presented and contributed in their own way. So these were the basic choices. Again, if I go back to the summary of the choices, then the summary becomes mechanisms and supplements for the next set of topics, primarily 50% of the population, long videos, 40.6% of the audience, and uh, Dr. Mubin selects the topic 72.6%. <laughs> this is... John has a good point. So AI, Elquin should have selected all. Uh, perfectly happy with those. Correct. Three cheers to all those who have helped you directly. Absolutely. Last In the last video, I was talking about some folks who caused a lot of damage. There are lots of people who helped as well. <laughs> Alexander says, let, choice three, let Luffy decide. Absolutely. Luffy is... Is a Luffy became a hero in this whole thing. And he says that this is true. No one does quite well what you do with detail and skillful explanation of complex processes. Thank you. And it just happened. Um, if I look at others who present, they all have their own flavors. I mean, they have an audience around them because there are people who like what they do. Uh, take Medcram or John Campbell, or uh, Vinay Prasad, or Z Dog, or uh, um, Dr. Martinson, uh, sorry, Martinson is his last name, uh, Chris Martinson, then um, Dr. Moran, then a number of more presenters uh, who have been presenting, and they all have a different flavor. 
the thing that I thought was missing is to actually enable you with the mechanisms so you can think at their level instead of being spoon fed. And so that's what I was doing. <laughs> Jessica says, I love your ther art therapy. Please consider pharmacovigilance and pharmacogenetics topics. These are good topics, Jessica. Agreed. Roller Girl says, yes, your tribe is here now. Absolutely. Um, Masha says, I want to understand autoimmune diseases and the causes and treatments. We'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Weed out haters. I have seen, Kim, that haters actually uh, do get automatically weeded out but on the way out they make sure that they um, express their displeasure and that i feel that that is a so when the interaction occurs and it's going to break off there is a slight friction before it breaks off so that is a friction time when they are yelling and cursing and they are asking you to stop and not do this and don't do that or I'll do this to you, I'll hit you, I'll hit you. And I'll, so that is that friction time and then they go away. Some don't go away and they keep <laughs> trying to complain and bring you down. There, there are those uh, mavericks as well. Gold Country says do a series of shorts, it will build up. Correct, so my marketing team has asked me for two months now to do 10 or 20 shorts for them that they can use in TikTok and here, and I haven't done it. And so they've given me an ultimatum to produce them. So I was thinking of uh, taking a few days to work on that. Yes, Alicia said Sunil Dan. So yes, I forgot Sunil Dan and others. There are many. They all have their own uh, styles and their own biases which become their style just like i have it okay so this is one now if you are ready i want to uh this so one more thing going forward then what do we do here is what we do i take monday and tuesdays for dr bean so i do more content there i do more tech for example my team is nowadays um, trying to clean our website design. Our website, if you see the designs, the homepage is different and the pricing page is different and the library page is different and the dashboard is different it's because we had been trying those various designs and then we didn't have enough money to see it through. Then COVID came and I became distracted on this side. So my team wants to clean up the designs. And for that, <laughs> how about this? If you'll find this humorous or interesting, they have asked me to set up my computer for coding and start helping them code the site towards to, so that we can rapidly bring it to the new design. So I would be setting up my environment, the engineering environment, tomorrow with my tech team. And then from next week, I will be writing some code as well, <laughs> which it has been so funny that people have been taking that as an insert to say that you write code. And I kind of become surprised that, man, I'm a doctor and I can write code. It's not insulting. <laughs> it's actually a fun thing. Not every doctor can do this. So I might actually be writing a uh, code. So back here, so Monday, Tuesday for Dr. Bean, plus the lectures I want to do, I want to do them more polished. I want to edit them better. I want to have a better polish on them while keeping my uh, style of drawing and that. So Wednesdays, as usual, we've been doing the supporters. So people who are supporters on Substack, who are supporters on Patreon, and people who are supporters on doc this YouTube channel, they will have two Zoom sessions. And we've been doing for some time now, weekly, one at 1 p.m. for international audience and people across the pond, they can just interact with me directly live on Zoom. And we, we can talk various topics. Um, I open up the mic for everyone and then we talk and we discuss things. The other session on Wednesdays is at 6 p.m. Pacific. That is mostly for the folks in the Americas. So that would remain 
the um, schedule for these audience. And honestly, when I give time from 12, 1 till 6, 7 to prepare and then present, it is so funny for me that there are people who think that if somebody supports this work, then I'm a grifter. And I cannot begin to explain how much time it takes to create, to prepare, to understand, to create, to illustrate, then to present. And if you take a doctor and tell him that eight hours every day from 12 o'clock to seven or eight, this is what you're going to do. And you're going to be an artist and you're going to be a presenter and you're going to be a doctor for the mechanisms. And then you're going to present this as well within one day. I don't know if you can get it done for $50 a day. <laughs> so uh, those who have been supporting, they, they have been helping. So there are two sessions for them. Thursday, we'll do a chit chat. We can discuss that the chit chat should be long or short or what kind of topics. We can do a news roundup. For example, today after this little schedule, I'm gonna show you a couple of news articles which I think are very interesting. So chit chat, plus on Thursdays, I would do a lecture for FLCCC, which I record separately that then gets uh, published on the FLCCC site. Fridays, we'll do a new lecture here on YouTube. So for example, tomorrow I'm preparing for a lecture, although in the in my dream now, I will be preparing for that for the whole week and I'll be presenting and drawing and more comfortably doing it. But tomorrow I'm gonna do it just the way I used to do before. So this is the uh, discussion for the schedules. Jen Jeanette saying, so I subscribed before your lecture series price went up. Do I have access to Zoom and all the rest? So you have access to everything on drbean.com, but the Zoom sessions are for a separate group of people who are paying every month. It's a smaller group. However, they are either paying $5 every month or $100 every month or $2 every month depends which group they're in. And so these are what I call super beans and they then uh, help me produce these lectures. This is for them. Jeanette, uh, although I don't mind if you wanna join as well, I have never sent out these links to uh, Dr. Bean members. Uh, we can talk about it. Can you do me a favor, send a note to support at drbean.com and I'll share the links with you. So now, <laughs> Kini says I have to get up at 4.30. Good night, Kini. Janet says thank you, you're very welcome. So, Megan says, if we paid for the year of medical lectures, will we still be able to access that? So when you pay for a year, normally the yearly lectures are those that have CMEs. So you only get CMEs to earn them in one year, those CMEs that you earned, you can get their certificates and see them, keep them forever. But the lecture access is for one year. So then after a year, you don't have access. Andy says, it would be interesting to know to what level of education have the cool beans studied and percentage of work in medical fields who do, don't and who are still studying. So it is interesting, Dr. Bean's members, about half of them are students, either medical students or nursing and PPA students. The remaining half are professionals in which nursing and PPA and physicians. I used to have a smaller percentage of physicians, maybe six or 7%, but now that percentage has actually grown a lot. I was surprised to see how many physicians have joined and I'm grateful that they trust me.
So with this, let me show you now. Um, John says, on the Zoom sessions, can I just join in to listen? I have a face for radio and voice like <laughs> chipmunk. Absolutely, you can become member of Cool Beans, Dr. Bean, or Substack, or Patreon. I think the YouTube channel is 2 or $3. And yes, absolutely, you can join in. Because what I do is I send out a weekly, for example, every Tuesday evening, I send out the links to all the members who are part of these three platforms. But you're welcome. Everybody is welcome. So uh, Pigeon says, what is the FLCC site of videos? So if you go to um, FLCCC, you have some videos on their platform. Then you have videos on Odyssey, and I think now on Rumble as well. So FLCCC has a very uh, exhaustive list of my lectures on long COVID and vaccine injury. They had that list on YouTube as well. YouTube has done something really interesting, kind of strange. They have blocked them from adding any more videos, but they haven't taken down my previous videos. But FLCCC cannot add more videos to it. And they have tried to reach out to YouTube to say, why can't we add more videos? And YouTube never respond to them. They just say, we don't know. And these videos that I do are vaccine injury or long COVID, all studies. There is no um, outrage against the governments or agencies. There is no conspiracies, nothing. There is just, here is a study, here is a problem, here is what they presented, the mechanism, or here is a solution and the mechanism. The only thing is in all of those videos, I say, this is Dr. Mubin from this platform. I think they do not like that YouTube. And probably they caught up with that sentence with their AI and finally just blocked it. So the channel is there. It's not taken down. But FLCCC doesn't have access to it anymore. So my lectures are mostly now Odyssey and Rumble. Uh, PCAG says, yes, sure, I will talk about this. Adil says, lectures remind me of college biology and more. At 82, I'm still enthusiastically learning. Thank you. You're very welcome. Learning is a very important thing to keep the brain sharp. So now let me show you. John says, Vitamins and supplements are a good choice. Also, anything related to naturally treating conditions. Yes, acid reflux, gut improvement. Absolutely. Absolutely, John. You're correct. Old School says, I was not aware of more videos. Time to start. <laughs> yes, it is the weirdest thing that they did. So if I go there, for example, if I go to YouTube, and I look for... Uh, long story short, FLCCC, this is the channel. And this channel has 6.2K subscribers. These are all my videos on various topics. I love this channel more than mine because just very concentrated, focused, long COVID and vaccine injury topics. And no conspiracies, nothing inflammatory or against the YouTube rules. No discussions of ivermectin or hydroxychloroquines. Just here is a mechanism in this study and all mainstream studies. But they have decided that they would not let them upload more. So the last video here was three months ago. And they just could not add more. But if you go to Odyssey, for example, and then you say, uh, long story short, FLCCC. Here. So frontline COVID-19 critical care, and you would see that my videos are here as well. These are all, majority are the long story videos. So they have started putting them here. Plus now they are putting them on Rumble too. But this is the most 
cowardly thing I saw YouTube doing that they didn't take them down. They didn't tell why they're upset. They just simply blocked the access to any further videos. That, that's the weirdest thing I've seen. Okay, so I want to now show you a couple of more things. And that is the last part of the discussion. Number one, I want to show you this. Stanford University president announces resignation over concerns about his research. So a group of students decided to look into the research done. I'm sure that they are looking into many. One of that was Stanford's own president. And I believe he does research in the neuroscience area. And the students started looking at his studies since 1990, I believe. And then, so 1999, 2001, and 2001. So the takeaway was that there were some studies where the data seemed manipulated, and it may not be a direct manipulation by the president, now former president of Stanford, but at least by some of the authors with whom the Stanford's president was a co-author. And the result is that they found this and the, uh, co the president of Stanford, um, he resigned. Stanford University president announces resignation. So this is one interesting thing that the data manipulation or data inaccuracies to conclude various studies in a specific direction has been going on for a long time. And there could be people who are well uh, respected and well rewarded by the society that may be um, moving up with some of the not the best ways to work. So this was interesting one. The second thing that I thought was really interesting, and I want to do this tomorrow. And you all know that I have been, I've been digging two things or digging to figure out two things. Number one, vaccine injury and long COVID, how does it happen? What is a good solution? What are the phenotypes? And so I don't want vaccine injury or long COVID to become swept under the rug like MECFS patients. So I'm kind of uh, still, my work is not as um, rigorous or as valuable as the patients themselves who are having to look for the solutions and trying to fix their own problem. The other thing that I'm very curious is those who are asymptomatic, why are they asymptomatic? And I used to say that in my talks, that if we can find out why some people are asymptomatic, or they have very mild symptoms, then maybe we can replicate that for others as well. And I used to say <laughs> that Fauci and co should be spending their time trying to figure out why these, this virus doesn't affect some people. It's not just about youngsters or about old people. So they should have spent billions of dollars in these three years figuring this out. So here is, I know that there were two studies going on. One is in Canada. I haven't seen their latest results. Other one was uh, near me, uh, UC San Francisco. So this is the UCSF study. What they found is very interesting. They said in a, in a subset of people who have HLA gene B, I believe 1051, let me see what is the exact number. One second. So let me show you as well, this gene HLA-B1501. This gene, whoever has it, they have they're twice as likely to not have symptoms or have mild symptoms. And if someone has HLA-B1501 from both parents, then they, they are eight 
and a half times less likely to have symptoms. That is quite a big uh, revelation. And the, it's, it may not be the only reason for people to be asymptomatic. But what is interesting is the question is, why are they asymptomatic? And I want to quickly draw this. Or how about I today I don't draw it and I say it the way I was explaining it to my wife today. I said, this is a very interesting study. I want to tell you what they found. And she said, OK, what did they find? And I said, imagine that there are multiple people. They, we all have different genetic compositions. And imagine the before SARS-CoV-2, the other coronaviruses that live in our throat. We all develop antibodies against these viruses and we develop T cells against them. So when the first time our, our immune system identifies these viruses or encounters these viruses, the co human coronaviruses, then our immune system responds and we make antibodies and T cells. Interestingly, everyone makes a different kind of antibody and different kind of T cell because the receptors are different for all of us. So imagine if this is a, a virus and you and I and 20,000 other people are making our antibodies against this virus. Some will make an antibody that would attach here. Some will have an antibody attaching here. Some will attach here. So they all will have a slightly different kind of an antibody. The HLA-B 1501 people, they develop an antibody. Imagine they develop a, a war plane. And when I get sick, and if I'm not HLA 1501, I develop a gun. <laughs> so I have a gun against the coronaviruses. And if you are HLA B 1501, you make a war plane against them. So the result is that when SARS-CoV-2 arrives in our body, the people who have HLA-B 1501, their immune system is better equipped from their previous exposure to human coronaviruses to attack the SARS-CoV-2 and kill it even before the SARS-CoV-2 does any damage. And because I only created a gun, which may not be sufficient to kill SARS-CoV-2, my body isn't able to respond as efficiently from previous exposure to human coronaviruses. And so I'm not able to protect myself very well from SARS-CoV-2. So HLA-B 1501 people can develop antibodies and T cells that when exposed to human coronaviruses also have the capability of attaching with SARS-CoV-2, but not others. And because of that, they stay asymptomatic. That is such a, a beautiful um, learning. And I want to draw this and I, I want to present it to you tomorrow. 30,000 people were participant in the study, so it's not a small study. Plus, they were able to repeat that. So what they did was, once they found this HLA-B 1501, then they said, we went to the blood of those people who were asymptomatic and we had their blood and we looked for this, this uh, set of uh, genes and they said we were able to find these genes. So it is statistically significant, it is repeatable, and they were able to find this. So I thought this is a very interesting study and I'm going to present that to you tomorrow, but today is a foreshadowing. Correct, Colombian is correct. I actually discussed this one from Can Canada and I, I discussed that what they are doing over there as well in this context. So I've been long curious about this. Yes, John, this is, I think, is a very important thing. I was thinking about having one or two guests, uh, maybe weekly or bi-weekly and have them present. So I will do that. So uh, McLevin is talking about, she says she never gets sick. So in our home, my wife doesn't get sick from the 
viruses and colds. So I have always been, I get sick with every cold. She doesn't. And so in our home, we used to say Mubin has a weak immune system and she has a strong immune system. But she may be H HLA B 1501 that she's able to respond better with her genetic makeup for immune systems, receptors and antibodies compared to me, maybe. But yes, so it's not about weak or strong immune system. It is what kind of specificity it can produce when it is exposed to coronavirus in the context of SARS-CoV-2. <laughs> Nipa says, what's on your wrist? Nipa, I had a ganglion cyst developed here with my continuous work and they they tapped it and they asked me to wear the compression um, bandage. <laughs> John says, Mrs. Bean does not go to post office either. That is true. <laughs> I She sends me. <laughs> so she's clever then. <laughs> So guy says, comparing blood work history with past three years. So I'm sure that they had blood work samples from other patients as well. So they compared this gene's presence. So they searched for this gene's presence in patients and non-patients. <laughs> lick pens, yes. I lick pen once in my life on a post office, and it has become the highlight <laughs> I remember when I did a talk about it, I drew that little cartoon that when you lick the coronavirus, it licks you back. <laughs> so this is the discussion. <clears throat> I hope this little chit chat 52 minutes was useful keep an eye on it and see that not many people watch these long videos and so uh, but I enjoy them <laughs> so Kim uh, I love how Dr. Bean laughs at our humor uh, the, <laughs> this has been some folks really do not like it <laughs> they send me messages or emails or or comments to stop giggling but this is just how I am. I giggle. Pigeon says, uh, I would enjoy watching an interview with multiple sclerosis scientists. That actually is a great idea. I'm telling you that don't have high hopes. Anytime I have these comments and I say, yes, this is awesome, I forget. I was hoping to have someone assist me and join me during these meetings, not as a moderator of the channel, but join me to assist me with these comments to capture them and kind of make them part of my list to present. Colombian says, but we love the chick chats. Absolutely. Happy to do them. <laughs> LK says, I love your giggle. We need more lightness in the world. Thank you. Thank you. That is true. This is also a fact. That is correct, Zygmir, that laughing actually. It was so funny um, in my last video. It's it's actually interesting, enjoyable to go read those comments. Uh, <clears throat> one comment was that I talked about ashwagandha, and I said that ashwagandha, Gandha is the fragrance and the the plant oils are very good for our health and remember forest bathing and i have done this discussion in the past you can just search for forest bathing in my videos and you can find them uh, there was a japanese study where they sent people out to a city and a forest and and they asked them to be near fragrant plants and they were better relaxed because the pr plant fragrance causes less cortisol to be developed and so our um, inflammatory state goes down and our uh, natural killer cells increase our immune system becomes better so I, I discussed that 
in ashwagandha and this person became so upset and said i am so disappointed i was not expecting from you to say that plant fragrance can be useful and so uh, laughter actually also <laughs> boosts the immune system now somebody is going to say i did not expect from a bean to say this so old school says maybe you could go back to presentation and it and then open a chat and cool beans channel i remember when you did that might help your stats and we'll get yes so i'm going to do some of these and we'll see what happens JLBC says that I'm in reality missing our daily meetings in YouTube. I miss them too, but if you see some of the chit chats, I've hidden them. They were. So I could say that we had 1,000 to 2,000 uh, folks who would watch them every day. So they are really interested, but others will not. And the YouTube Belgo would just punish me and they would downgrade the rest of the videos as well, thinking people are not going to click them. And so it was just strange. But I, I love these discussions. You are very correct. Ground says ignore the Amazonic negative ones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please remember to also debate Dr. Peter Hortez. He is uh, not debatable. <laughs> Sorry, now I'm going to get so much heat for saying this. See, you guys make me say things that then in comments, people become mad about them. Peter Hortez would change his position every week. I'm exaggerating, but he's changed his position many times. So not debatable. <laughs> Susan says, lol, oops, yes. Oops is going to be now people going to send. He you should actually, with such comments and videos, you should keep an eye on the comments and see how people then start attacking and becoming upset. Mr. Charles, yes, thank you. So Ayush is Ayurveda Yoga Yunani Siddhi Homeopathy. Please more topics on them. Sure. Oh, so even are you, uh, what was this? Ashwagandha. It was so surprising that the, there was a comment by someone saying, because you're from Pakistan, that's why you don't want to give credit to India that this is from India. And you said it can also be in Middle East and Africa. Actually, these were Indian researchers who wrote that paper, which I was referring, where they said ashwagandha is Indian native. And then it is also cultured and grown in other such places. So that person, and then he said, don't you know that even in your country, all of your spices are Indian spices? So. Uh, he wrote something like that and I was just reading it and I was like, man, I'm talking about ashwagandha and I'm talking about India being used there in for 3000 years. So you got to read it before you lose your <laughs> mind. And then he de deleted that. So it was funny. People would pick on anything. Absolutely. Kim in nature. So the essential oils, or the plant oils, if we cannot go for forest bathing, then if we have them, we relax in response to them. So that may be, this is me, my conjecture, that may be because we used to live in the plants or forests and we were very closely integrated with them. So presence of plants and trees around us relaxed us. Maybe we felt protected, maybe we felt nurtured, whatever it was. And so we our body still does it and it's not mubeen making up things there are studies so so this is the day to day a complete hour <laughs> nipa says ignore them yes i did so one hour thank you very much this is the chit chat I am hoping that if you approve of this, we will do chit chats on on uh, Thursdays. 
and then on Fridays we'll do a lecture. Wednesdays we'll do two Zoom sessions, and Monday and Tuesday I'll work for Dr. Bean. You you guys will have to come save me because Dr. Team Dr. Bean team wants me to become an engineer for them. So I was saying, guys, what are you doing to me? <laughs> so thank you very much. I showed you the results as well. Any comments, uh, any guidance is welcome. And if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. You can support this work as well. Thank you, and I would see you tomorrow. Bye for now.